Monday high school football championship action this morning as the Carthage Blue Boys return to Champaign and they take on Newman Catholic out of Sterling, Illinois. The Comets and the Blue Boys, it'll be a sea of blue on the Memorial Stadium field. Hello and welcome to Memorial Stadium. I'm Lee Hall along with Greg Bradshaw for the call of the 2A game with a couple of schools if you look at them size-wise. They're 1A, but they play against 2A schools all year long, Greg. And uh, differing styles between these two teams. You've got the wing tee for Carthage. You've got the wishbone for Sterling Newman. Yeah, both teams like to keep the ball on the ground. They've got good offensive lines and great backs you'll see today. Uh, the thing about these teams, too, is they play great defensive football, and they don't beat themselves. I expect a great matchup today. Uh, you're in for a great treat. It's a rematch of the 1998 Class 1A state championship won by Carthage. That was part of their three-peat in Class 1A. Let's take a look at how these two teams got here. First, the visitors from Carthage over in Hancock County. First round, they shut out, uh, here we go, they shut out Tremont, 56-0. Then maybe their only close game of the year, they beat Orion 22-20, came back uh, with a 30-0 shutout against Knoxville. And then last week at home at Fuzz Burgess Field, it was a 41-0 shutout over Shelbyville. Now for Sterling Newman, they shut out Forreston in the first round. No problem with Poplar Grove North Boone, Eastland Pearl City, a 31-8 win. And then a tough win on the road, Maroa Forsyth, a very strong team at home. A couple of All-Staters, they shut down Letter Parks and won that ball game 14-7. Now we take a look at some of the key players, Greg. First for Carthage, it's just it's the same thing every year for these guys. They just plug in new guys, but some of these are state veterans, and including David Watts, who's been here before. David Watts, he's been starting for the last two. This is his third year playing in the state championship game. He's the key. They get the ball to him, and he starts everything on their offense. Over 1,400 yards, 19 touchdowns on the year. He's done a great job, and he's a great leader on this team. Defensively for the Blue Boys. Jack Rogers uh, is the guy in the middle. He's got a, a tough task today with that wishbone offense he's going to see from Newman, but uh, he's done a great job. They have eight shutouts, and he's the key to that defense. And on the opposite side, wearing the blue jerseys today, Sterling Newman, coached by Mike Paposi. Their key players on off, first on offense. On offense, uh, their quarterback is uh, just the key uh, to their offense. Uh, well, first we're going to talk about, I guess, on defense, Charlie McGinn. Charlie is uh, a big 6'2", 235-pound uh, uh, linebacker. He plays both ways. He's got to stop Watts today. There are going to be some big collisions in the middle. And then from the offensive side of the ball, Chris Salvatore is the key. He runs that wishbone offense to perfection. They're going to have to get some big plays out of Salvatore at quarterback. He may have to throw the ball today uh, to really make a difference in this game. So that's going to be interesting. Going throwing 50 passes, I think the pass is going to be key for Salvatore. Only two interceptions between these two quarterbacks. They don't throw it a lot, but both are very efficient. Uh, Reed for Carthage has not thrown an interception in over 50 pass attempts and uh, just two interceptions for Salvatore. We're just about ready to get things started. We flip-flop things this year. We begin with 2A this year as Carthage takes on Sterling Newman. And I believe we are ready to go to our PA announcer, Jeff Fritzen, for the starting lineups. Presenting the, Presenting the colors, colors today are the Illinois State, State Honor Guard, Guard Sergeant, Sergeant First Class, Class Rochelle, Rochelle McKay, McKay Sergeant, Sergeant Calvin Young, Young Sergeant, Sergeant Stephen Starks, Starks, and Sergeant, Sergeant Nicole, Nicole Olam. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask you to stand and join the band from Carthage High School in the singing of our national anthem.
perfect season. They've had three perfect 14 and 0 seasons back when they won three straight state championships. Uh, okay, well, here they are. Here they are. They are on this side. Fletcher. All right, we uh, apologize. We're having a little technical difficulty here. Welcome back. Lee Hall, Greg Bradshaw for the call of today's 2A state title game. Carthage will be the visitors, the Blue Boys 13-0, coached by Jim Unruh. He has uh, made this a Thanksgiving weekend tradition in the town of Carthage, bringing the Blue Boys here six of the last seven years. And they take on Sterling Newman. Let's go now to Jeff Fritzen, our PA announcer for today's starting lineups. Lineups for today's Class 2A state championship. First on defense for the Carthage Blue Boys. At in number 22, Brian Huff. At tackle number 88, Skyler McKinley. At nose guard number 55, Savas Melitas. At tackle number 54, Andrew Swearingen. At end, number 60, Jack Rogers. At linebacker, number 30, Ryan Biddenstadt. At linebacker, number 31, David Watts. At linebacker, number 32, Brock Idris. At back, number 21, Jason Wildrick. At cornerback number six, Zach Reed. And at safety number five, Paul Sheets. The Blue Boys are coached by Jim Unruh. And now the starting offense for the Newman Catholic Comets. And in number 21, Jeremy Shippert. At tackle number 63, Charlie McGinn. At guard number 66, Aaron Morgan. At center number 74, Jonathan Shutt. At guard number 60, Travis Peterson. At tackle number 65, James Patriga. At quarterback number 11, Chris Salvatore. At fullback, number 31, Nate Dreesen. At halfback, number 30, Jason Prendergast. At halfback, number 34, Chris Welty. And at end, number 85, Gray Harrison. The Comets are coached by Mike Paposi. All right, there you get a good look at Mike Paposi and the Sterling Newman Comets. Greg, let's take a look at the keys to the game. First for Carthage. Well, Carthage brings a lot of emotion in this game. They've been here two years in a row, and they've been right at the brink of winning a state championship, losing two years ago to Alito, and then they ran into Kyle Tutt and Iroquois West last year. But this group um, has not won a state championship in uh, all three years. The first group maybe since 1993 not to win a state championship. If they don't win today, there's a lot of pressure they need to focus. Number two, third and long. They need to force Sterling Newman to get in long yarded situations. They don't like to throw the ball. They get third, six, seven, eight. That's positive for them today. And lastly, strike early and often. Uh, Carthage has scored over 350 points in the first half alone and given up only 14, Lee. They strike early and often. They want to get out to a good start here. Sterling Newman will get the ball first. Let's take a look at the keys for the Comets. Well, first of all, surviving till the fourth. We talked about it before uh, we went on air here. They only have four guys that go both ways, while Carthage has eight, and they got big hogs up front. Um, they can stay in this game in the fourth quarter. I think they will have the advantage down the stretch. Secondly, what's on first? What are they going to do on first down? They need to keep Carthage off balance. They may be able to play action pass. Need to keep them guessing. It'll be very beneficial for them. And lastly, they got to unplug David Watts. David Watts is the key to this football team for Carthage. They need to step up in the hole and hit him and get him uh, to, to slow down a little bit for them to have a great chance today. What's on first? I thought who was on first. I know. That's, <laughs> that, that's, you're right. Uh, we're showing our age now. That's we weren't right. even around for that. Uh, all right. Savas Melitas will kick off for the Blue Boys. The senior back for Sterling Newman. 
will be Clayton Norberg, number 12, and Chris Welty, number 34. And that's a moot point because Miletus boots it through the end zone. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for today's ball game. And there you get a look at the offensive line for Sterling Newman, Travis Peterson, Charlie McGinn, John Shutt, Aaron Morgan, James Patriga up front. They are averaging 6'1", 230. They've got a little size advantage on the Carthage line. Here's the backfield, Salvatore, Dreesens, Norberg, Chris Welty, Jeremy Shippert, and Gray Harrison. The ends probably won't get much work in this ball game as Sterling runs the wishbone. Newman, Salvatore under center. Fakes the first handoff. Skyler McKinley through the line and stuffs the first run of the ball game. That was Prendergast on the run. And a big play on first down from the Carthage defense. Let's take, let's take a look at Jim Unruh's Blue Boys up front. It's Brian Huff, Skyler McKinley, Savas Miletus, Andrew Swearingen, the All-Stater, and Jack Rogers. Biddenstat, Watson, Idris, the backs on offense are also the linebackers and Defensive backs Wildrick, Reed, and Sheets. That brings up second down. Salvatore now pitches. That's Dreesen's around left end. Flag on the play after a gain of about seven. Looks like they're going to have holding and bring this back. Not a good start here for Newman Central Catholic. Uh, first place, Skylar McKinley beats the block, gets, for, gets back in the backfield for a two-yard loss here. They got a penalty, so not a good start. Newman headed the wrong way here in the opening moments of this 2A state championship game. And let me be the first to say, hello, Newman. <laughs> uh, you've been waiting to say that all, been all week. All week. Hey, all week. I've been all looking right. forward to it. John <laughs> Kelly, Gene Krupa, Joe D. Gary Grohovina and James Court are officials today. Congratulations to them for making it to state today. Third down, 20. Handoff up the middle is to Nate Dreesens, the fullback, and gets a couple, maybe three yards. Well, this is exactly what Carthage wants to do, get them in long yarded situations right here. It's a little bit tough. They're throwing against the wind for you guys watching this at home. We got a right to left wind, pretty strong. You saw that on the kickoff. Um, so this is a tough situation here um, for New Newman Catholic here early in the game. Brings up third and 17. Here's the pitch, the quick kick by Norberg, shanks it. It's going the wrong way, touches it, and now Travis Peterson falls on it. They try the quick kick, and it backfires on Newman. Carthage will get the ball with eight yards to go for a touchdown, Greg. Great play by Miletus getting in on the quick kick, getting a hand on it. Huge break for Carthage early in the game. And the key for Carthage, if you look, well, let's take a look first at their offensive line. The big guys up front, Swearingen, Hibbard, Savas Miletus, Jack Rogers, and Richard Tanner are the linemen for Jim Unruh, Zach Reed, the quarterback. His brother was a quarterback. David Watts, Biddenstadt, Nidris, Tyson Dickerson, and Jason Wildrick on the outside. So it's first and goal from the seven. A great opportunity here for the Blue Boys, who run the wing tee. Reed hands it off inside. It's Watts with the first carry of the game. He gets it near the five-yard line. And that'll bring up second down. You're going to see a lot of that today. They like to get Watts on the inside, pound him inside, and then he'll pull it out, and uh, Reed will go around the corner and be ready to pitch it out to Biddenstaff. Phillips, Troy, McGinn, Hermes, and Holmes up front for the blue machine of Sterling Newman. Travis Peterson, Mike LeMay, Ben Workins at linebackers and defensive backs, Norberg, Prendergast, and Edwards. Second down and goal, the give. No, it's the give to Biddenstad instead, and he's in for the score. Boy, Zach Reed is a magician with that football, and it was Biddenstad on the second hit, and he takes it five yards for the first score of the game. 9.44 to go first quarter. A quick hit for the Blue Boys, who almost always go for two. You'll see it right here. Great fake by Reed into, into Watts there. Then he gives the ball to Biddenstad. 
and, and Binstaff does a little extra work, lowers his shoulder, gets in the end zone. An unbelievable start for Carthage. Uh, not what you want if you're Newman, but it's a long game. we got a long way to go. Ryan Biddenstaff, 16th touchdown of the year. They do go for two. Reed, the pitch. Biddenstaff walks into the end zone for the two-point conversion. That's his 16th two-point conversion of the year. If it stands, there's a flag on the play. Holding against the Blue Boys. So they'll try it again. This is a big break. These games, Carthage goes with two for a, a lot of times. They will go for two points. These are big plays in this game. Um, it's going to have a little bit, they're going to have a little tough time here now. They're going to have to go from the 12-yard line. And uh, they don't like to be in long yard situations either. Looks like they're going to kick here, Lee. That will mean all-conference kicker Savas Miletus will step in, the senior. He is 16 for 19 for point after attempts. That one is up and good. So instead of an 8-0 lead, Carthage will go ahead and take a 7-0 lead. It's actually a small victory for Newman. Back with more after these network messages. And a quick start for Carthage. Starts haven't been a problem for them in the last two championship games, Greg. It's been the finish that's been a problem right. for and Carthage. That's, and that's the key for Newman. It's a long football game. Um, they uh, are a good football team. They just need to keep their composure, play their football game, and they'll be back in this game. Um, as long as they get some positive yards, they need to get some first downs against this win. Which, for an option team, a wishbone team, you wouldn't think that would be that much of a problem. It is a problem if they have to punt. We just saw what they tried to do on right. the quick kick. It cost them their first score. Yeah, like you say, the key is to not get in that situation. Right. Miletus to kick. It's Welty watching it go over his head and into the end zone for the touchback. Prendergast back there uh, to try and <laughs> receive that kick. But uh, Miletus is a good kicker, wind or no wind. He's uh, been doing it for a while. and. Uh, as you saw there, what amounted to a, it was about a 30-yard extra point, and he drilled it, the straight-on kicker for the Blue Boys. All right, Newman will reload on offense after the quick kick and giving Carthage a two-play seven-yard drive. Here's the give. It's Prendergast, and he gets maybe five on first down, so that's a good start for the Comets. This is what they do. They, they lead both uh, the fullback and the lead tailback up into the hole for blocks. A, a good cut and a nice gain on first down of five yards. That's what they need to do with each of their first down plays. Chris Salvatore, the senior quarterback, runs the show. Looked like he might have almost had a little bit of trouble with a the snap there and not much yardage there for Chris Welty. Swearingen. In on the tackle, Andrew Swearingen, six foot, 220 pound senior, all state, all conference. Yeah, he's made two tackles in a row. They may not want to run that direction as much. They might want to run the other side. He's a big, strong football player. Brings up third and four. Now one back is Dreesens. The pitch is to him. Dreesens gets first down yardage and more. He's out across the 40, driven out of bounds at the 45 by Ryan Biddenstad. That's a first down for Newman. Gain of 20. Here's the play right here, just a little option. They run a trips formation. Nice pitch, great blocking downfield as you see it. He gets up the sidelines for a big gain. You're not going to see a lot of breakaway speed out of Newman, um, but they do have a backs to get yardage, get the tough yardage. So they get in the open, they probably won't break long ones. That's about a, a, a nice game though for that, for that offense. The give inside is to Dreesens again. And Savas Miletus in on the tackle for Carthage. They'll give him two yards on that as Newman approaches midfield. Twelve and one for Sterling Newman this year. They're only lost to Bureau Valley, who will play for a state championship later today. Here's the pitch to Welty. 
And he's brought down after a couple. They've got three good backs. The good thing about this offense is you don't, they don't, you don't, can't key on one guy because they can spread the ball around. Each one of these guys can make yards for this team. So uh, it's it's difficult to uh, to play this deep or play this offense because of what they do in sharing the ball. Big play here now, third and three. It all begins with the quarterback, Chris Salvatore, great decision maker for the Comets. Third and three, flag on the play. Somebody moved. It looks like it's Newman. The Carthage shifted the defense, and I think that shift um, made the offensive line of Newman jump off sides. Now that makes it a little tougher. There you get a look at Jim Unruh pacing the Carthage sideline, bringing up third and eight, 7.25 to go here first quarter. Carthage, the early 7-0 lead after a quick kick gone wrong for Newman. Man in motion for Newman, Salvatore, he's back to throw, avoids the rush, flips it out, and Prendergast can't hang on. Good job by Salvatore. Good job by him avoiding the rush and getting an opportunity to get rid of the football, not taking the loss. Here you see the fake into the line. He looks out here, he's looking to go to the corner, you see uh, there, and he avoids the rush, tries to throw the ball in on the flat, just a little bit over his head. Good effort by Salvatore, but they're gonna have to punt the ball. Only his 53rd pass attempt of the year. Jake Harrison is back to punt for Newman. Reed and Biddenstadt back for Carthage. Harrison almost gets it blocked. And it will tumble and roll the wrong way for Newman. They will down it at the 30-yard line. Punt of just 21 into that win and Harrison averages about 35, so that's going to be, uh, as you said earlier, it's not going to do much for the average today, but uh, a little bit better field positioning for uh, Newman defensively anyway this right. time. Reed gives to Biddenstad around the right side. He's out to the 35 and fumble. Ball on the ground. And Newman recovers. And that has been one Achilles heel for Carthage, not just this year, but in past championship games, 32nd fumble of the year. They've lost 18. That's a pretty high percentage. You don't want to put it on the ground, especially with a team like Sterling that's going to take five yards, five yards, five yards. They can't make a lot of huge plays because they don't have a lot of speed. You don't want to short the field on them. Now they've got the ball on the 36-yard line, and they can score on this short field. Salvatore gives, now gives, keeps it, takes it himself. Mike Paposi says he runs like a fullback, and you saw a little bit of that right there. Both teams do a great job faking. You'll see on this play what he fakes into the fullback, into the line, pulls it out, big hole off right tackle, nice gain, 11 yards, 25-yard line. Chris Salvatore. 337 yards on the ground this year, but they come at opportune times. Here's the give to Welty, and he's brought down after not much. Swearingen and Melitas in on the stop. And that's kind of a point of pride for the Blue Boys defense. Their top three tacklers are all linemen, and you don't see that quite very often, really. No, they're, they're quick. You can see that there. Melitas gets off the block, makes a tackle from behind. Comes down the line of scrimmage, makes a nice tackle. Only a one-yard gain. Second and nine for Newman. The wishbone here, the pitch is to Prendergast. Cuts it up inside. And is down inside the 20. And they'll mark it inside the 18-yard line. Newman's offensive line gets on people. They're doing a nice job sustaining their blocks and letting their backs make cuts. Nice job by the guys up front there and the two lead backs on that play. I think this is four down territory right here for, for Newman. Third and two for Newman. Newman. 
Dreesen's the give, and he is close to first down yardage as he gets inside the 15. Saw right before the play there, Carthage went into a gap eight. They shifted, had eight men across, all lined up, standing up in the gaps, um, trying to uh, create some problems who were to, for, for uh, Newman on who they were going to block. Did a nice job just folding down, getting the first down. Back in the wishbone this time, first down and 10. And the move that time by Prendergast, who has gotten more playing time. Clayton Norberg has uh, battled injuries throughout the playoffs. And bring up second and four. Nice cut, there really wasn't a hole there at the point of attack. I mean, a nice cut back and got an extra four or five yards. Nice play on first down again for Newman. Carthage defense needs to come up with a play here to stop these Newman Comets, and they can't. Inside the five now, that's Dreesen's, the fullback. And Newman appears to have their feet under them after that uh, first drive, and uh, yeah, you know, got a little that, bit of a rhythm going here offensively. We may look back at that fumble by Carthage on that first play as a big one because Carthage can move the football. They hold on to it and get another score. It's a different story now. It looked like we could be tied up. In the championship game last year, Carthage fumbled seven times and lost three of them. Right. And they still were in the football game. Even though they did that, they, they were still in the football game. That's a first down. So Newman will get four shots at it from inside the Carthage five-yard line. Boy, this field looks a lot different than it did when we got here this morning. All you could see was the eye. Did a nice job in a, in a big hurry. We really have a great day. Getting that snow clear. Oh, it's you know, beautiful it's, it's day. It's nice. It really is nice, about 45 degrees. I wish I was doing sideline reporting today. <laughs> Here's the give. He bounces off one tackler, and Dreesen's is in. That didn't take long. They take advantage of the Carthage turnover. And Newman with a chance to tie with a Jake Harrison extra point. That's their game that we just saw. Four or five yards, positive yards on first down. Get the ball into the end zone with their big line. Jake Harrison's kick is blocked. He was 21 of 27 coming into the ball game, and Carthage blew through the line and got up. I don't, I'm not sure who got a hand on it, but Carthage blocks it, and they lead by one, seven to six. We'll be back with more after this network break on the IHSA TV network. And welcome back. There's Jim Unruh, head coach of the Carthage Blue Boys in his 19th year, 191 and 33. He is 4 and 3 in title games, 41 and 18 overall in state uh, playoff action. Four state titles for the Carthage Blue Boys. 95, 1998, 99 and 2000 when they won the three 1A titles in a row back in the days of 6A football. I would hate to be the basketball coach at well, Carthage because you don't get your guys till four or five games are already on the books. That's a great story. They are <laughs> the basketball coach helps with stats and some of the assistants help with spotting. They don't schedule a Thanksgiving <laughs> tournament for that very reason. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, it's right now it's freshmen and JV guys practicing right now. I think they've got one upperclassman who doesn't play football on the basketball team. They get the latest start of any basketball team that's in the right. state. That's right. I mean, that's how much Carthage football means to that community. They just, <laughs> the basketball coach yesterday was laughing about it. But, I mean, that's just, that's the way life is if you're a Carthage blue boy. Here's Harrison with the kick into that wind. And it'll be Zach Reed, the quarterback, coming up and fielding it at about the 25, and he's got it across the 30-yard line. You think about it, Lee. When Carthage goes to the state championship three years in a row, 
They play an extra five weeks each week. That's 15 extra weeks of practice. That's a whole nother season. These guys have such an advantage because they keep coming a lot of practice for their underclassmen. That's how the, the, the uh, good get even better with being able to go to the championship and having that much extra practice over the teams that don't even make the playoffs. It's it's a way of life. I mean, they've got it down to a science over there. They, they have the whole week plan. They have all kinds of traditions they go through all week. Reed rolls out. He's a good passer. Had a man, had a man open, Wildrick, but uh, just barely overthrew him. Zach Reed on the season, 26 of 53 of those 26 completions, 11 went for touchdowns. So he's almost 50% completion rate, almost 50% on touchdowns. Here he is. They fake the uh, their their favorite play, the cross sweep. And there's Wildrick wide open. That I think it was a victim <laughs> of the wind there. That that ball looked like it was going right into his hands. A little bit of wind gust took it over. The, just the outstretched uh, reach of his fingers. Just under four minutes to go now, first quarter, 7-6, Carthage, Biddenstadt looking for yardage outside and doesn't get much there. Workins in on the tackle for Sterling Newman. Matt Phillips also in on the stop, senior lineman. Again, that's their bread and butter play. They like that cross sweep. They pull two, their two big guards out front, fake the ball to Watts, hand it off to Biddenstaff on the cross sweep. and. Uh, that play has got them a lot of success and a few championship rings uh, for Carthage. Nothing doing there. Now it's third and ten for Carthage after the incompletion and the no game. Backs are split. Reed keeps it himself and gets across the 35, near the 36-yard line to bring up fourth down. You can see the quickness of Reed. Tough play inside on third and long. Uh, they get five yards. And they'll have to punt the ball away. They, they do have the wind here. Three minutes to go before the end of the quarter. Idris will punt. It's Welty and Clayton Norberg back to receive. Welty fields it at the 33, then drops it. Has to fall on it and gets it back. Smart play there after you fumble it. Don't try and, do, don't try and be too fancy. Just go ahead and grab it and keep possession. Keep possession. 31-yard punt for... Brock Idris. I think this is a big drive here for uh, Newman. Uh, they had that uh, short field where they scored from 30 yards out. Now they got an opportunity to put a, a long drive together. I think this is going to tell us a lot about how this game is going to go. I noticed last time, too, they ran the ball to the right. They started running the left and got stopped by Swearingen over there. They moved the ball more running to the right. Salvatore keeps it himself, and he's tripped up. Watts tripped him up. Chris Salvatore, the ball carrier. And Huff was there to make sure he didn't go any further. David Watts is a, a good player on both sides of the ball. Um, physical, strong kid. Here we have uh, just the offensive line, 230 pounds versus Carthage front. You know, about a 20 uh, pound advantage for, New for Newman. Second and seven. And here's the give to Prendergast, and not much that time. Rogers, Jason Prendergast, there to bring him down. Tackle by number 60. Looked Jack like a Rogers. hole there. Jack Rogers closed that fast. There was an opening. Jack Rogers comes down from his end position, makes a nice hit, holds them to a two-yard game, bringing up third and six. The Carthage defensive line entirely new this year. Jim Unruh said we needed third most down, improvement out of five, that. If we got it. We thought we could get this far, and they did. So he gives a lot of credit to the Carthage run to the state championship game to that defensive line. Third and five, Salvatore, the pitch now. And not much doing there for Chris Welty. Well read by the Blue Boys, Swearingen and Sheets in on the stop. Nice play by Zach Reed out here. Um, just waiting waiting for that play on the pitch. Uh, I like this, they're doing a good job. Newman's doing a little bit of, of different formations than we've seen. It's nice to see they're running some trips, spreading them out a little bit, but uh, Zach Reed read that play, made a great stop. Jake Forced Harrison punt. punt for Newman yeah. Catholic. Jake Harrison back to punt again. Zach Reed and Biddenstadt back for the Blue Boys. Biddenstadt will field it just inside the 40. He's got some room outside near midfield and brought down there. And about the 47, 48 yard line where the Blue Boys will take over with 56 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Carthage got the first touchdown of the game just a minute or two in. A quick kick after uh, 
Newman's offense stalled. The quick kick on third down. It was shanked. It didn't go very far. Carthage, a two-play, seven-yard drive to take the early 7-0 lead. And there's the, uh, the trench is pretty even when it comes to uh, Carthage on offense, at least weight-wise. Reed gives to Watts. He's got a hole and keeps his feet and is near a first down just inside the 43-yard line. Looks like he'll be just short depending on the spot here. It is close. I think it's going to be short. I think they're going to go ahead and measure. Lee, when do you think uh, it was the last time that Carthage, with 49 seconds to go in the first quarter, has not had a first down? They have not had a first down. I don't think that has happened in a long time. Well, the first three playoff games, they fumbled and lost it on the first possession uh -huh. of the game. Now, they did it on the second possession today. Right. So, But they only had one play down on the five-yard line. So. Well, yeah, two, yeah. Yeah, two, yeah. <laughs> so. You're right. And I asked Jim Unruh about that, and he just kind of shrugged his shoulders, and, you know, things kind of work out. I mean, but that's the one thing when you look at their numbers, the one thing that, that – maybe you can perceive as a possible weakness for Carthage is they do put the ball on the ground a little bit and if teams can take advantage of that that's right. the key now nobody's been able to take advantage of that this year really the only test of the year was in the playoffs against Orion and uh, Carthage won that game 22-20 Reed back to throw rolling left throws across the middle and almost picked off Peterson Travis Peterson the linebacker got a hand on it and that's it twice now that Reed's thrown. He's rolled left, and that's tough to do. Yeah, he rolls left. He moves his feet. Great play by Pearson. Big guy, 235 pounds. Watch him get up. That nice play. Good athletic up ability. On, uh, on that nice IFB job. that I had labeled yesterday. So he's got... He Third down and one. Good call there by Coach Unruh, though. They, they know they can get this. They got two downs to make uh, basically two or three inches. It's, it's worth, the, worth the time. He's only got a few more seconds with the wind. That was a good call. 30 seconds left, first quarter. Watts brought down, tried to do the Walter Payton thing over the line. Not sure if his forward progress got the first down or not. They're going to have to measure again. Great stop by the defense there. Watts, 225 pounds, to get him to stop. Mm -hmm. And there you get a look at uh, the Carthage profile. 39 rushes a game. They average over 300 yards and only throw the ball four times a game. But again, very efficient when they do. Sure. Contrary to Zach Reed's 0 for 2 start. It is a first down. Watts did get forward progress. So it'll be a first down for the Blue Boys. A one point lead in this one in 28 seconds with the win. Famous wing T, man in motion. That's Idris, he gets the carry, and he's down near the 30-yard line. It'll be a first down after a gain of about 12. Again, nice play, second back, Idris coming through. Flag on the play late after flag. the play was called dead. Ooh, a late flag, and it goes against Carthage. Boy, that came in late. So that will negate the 12-yard gain. A nice run by Brock Idris. Maybe it was on the ground and somebody kicked it and I didn't yeah. see it until late. They're going to end up with about a two-yard net gain on it and get the, uh, the down over. So basically it's first down and eight. So they get a couple of yards on it. Black in the back. Offense. Repeat first down. It's against Jim, Jim Unruh's offense. That's right. Got a Canadian official. <laughs> Doesn't have much to do with NHL being uh, no. you know, on the sidelines, no, nobody playing. Canadian football's done. They've already awarded the Grey Cup. That's going to bring the first quarter to an end. These two teams get together. It's usually close. Carthage beat Newman earlier. In the semifinals in 1995 and in the 98 the finals, they were both football games. We, we've got to go to 
Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. the period. Hang on. Run a Thank play. You, Greg. you can't end the game on an offensive penalty. Or the quarter. Or the quarter. You're right. Since the game is not over. You're right. <laughs> you would be right. It's gone fast, but not that right. fast. <laughs> you cannot end the quarter either. No, either one. Back on the East Bluff in Peoria, we used to call this a do-over. What would right. you call it? Do-over? Yeah, we did that too. Do-overs? A little more whining. Up in the That's suburbs. a do-over. It's a do-over. They don't have to contend with a car coming down the street, though. Give us to Biddenstadt. He goes around the right side. Not much there for Ryan Biddenstadt, the junior running back. So now we are in the first quarter. 7-6, Carthage. Be back after these local messages on the IHSA TV network. All right, we're back at Memorial Stadium, the Class 2A state championship game. Look at this. Look at this. They're fired up. This is the Newman Central Catholic cheering section. Hey, they like what's going on. We're ready to start the second quarter of this game. Let's send it back to you guys, Lee. All right, Mike, thanks a lot, buddy. Last time we saw you, it was uh, about a foot of snow on your head. That was <laughs> the uh, finals last year, and uh, Mike did yeoman's work in the middle of a snowstorm. Second and seven for Carthage. And Idris is close to another Carthage first down. Nice job by Idris breaking about three tackles to get to the yard line, or to the sticks. Looks like they're going to bring another measurement out here. We mentioned Carthage has been to the state title game six of the last seven years. The only thing that kept them away the other year in 2001, there was a teacher strike in Carthage. They had to forfeit three games and then had to play Alito in the first round where they lost. Championship so, game in the first, in the first round, round, basically. Yeah, yeah. And then with a rematch the next the year. The next year and uh, Alito won in overtime. Yeah, was a great so game. a couple of heartbreaks in a row for Carthage against Alito. First and 10. Blue Boys offense clicking. Idris in motion. He'll go around left end. Rodgers put his hat on a man, but it was Peterson, Peterson tracking down Brock Idris. Nice play by Peterson getting off his block and they're coming out and making the play. Mike Paposi, P-A-P-O-C-C-I-A. -C -C okay, okay. I couldn't figure out how I knew how to pronounce his name. Of course, his son Andrew was a linebacker at Illinois State, played in the state championship game against Carthage, had a 95-yard punt return. I think that's still a state record. So the Paposi name, well-known around football circles in the state. Mike's been at Newman forever, 25 years, a couple of state championships in 1A. Reed keeps it. Ball's on the ground, picked up by Jack Rogers. Oh, a fortuitous bounce for the Blue Boys. Could have been disaster. This could have been their second loss fumble of the game. Heads up play by Jack Rogers. Brings up third and four yards, a big difference versus the ball going the other way with Stern's offense coming onto the field. Friendly hop off that turf for Carthage. Brings up third and five. We near the 11 minute mark in the second quarter. Lee Hall, Greg Bradshaw, Mike Cleft down on the field bringing you 2A state championship football. Reed fakes the give, back to throw. His third attempt of the day is knocked down by Zach Holmes. Reed's pass knocked down by number 20, Zach Holmes. The junior, 5'11", 180 pound junior, number 20. Stuck his mitts up there and knocked it down. It brings up fourth down for Carthage. And Probably in fourth down, uh, four down territory here, I would imagine. They rolled out Zach again to his left. He has to stop, set his feet, and make the throw. Nice heads up play. I'm knocking the ball on the second knockdown of the game for Newman. Reverse, Idris brought down in the backfield by Nate Troy. Mike Paposi says he's the second strongest player on the team, and he muscles up to stop Carthage on fourth down. 
He plays with a lot of emotion. Before uh, the game, he brought the team out. You could see the, all the, the, his teammates feeding off of his energy. Great play there on, on fourth down, giving Newman's offense a chance to come on the field. Here's this trips formation here to the left again. They like to run the option out of this. Newman's defense stands tall, and now they go to work offensively, and that's Dreesen's, the fullback, who's brought down as he got close to the 35-yard line. Dreesen's became a starter for Mike Poposi midway through the season and has been an integral part of this Newman offense in the playoffs. Second and five now. Newman trails it here, 7-6, second quarter. Here's the pitch. Clayton Norberg gets his first rush of the game. We're going to have a penalty, a face mask against Carthage. A nice play by the Carthage defense. An inadvertent face mask will make it a, a positive play for Newman after they were Norberg was brought down in the backfield. Yeah, it's unfortunate for Carthage. They were right there to make the play for about a three or four yard loss. And uh, the hand comes out on the face mask, gonna cost him five yards here. Clayton Norberg sprained his ankle five games ago and has been seen limited playing time. As Jim Unruh looks on from the sideline in his the 15 -yard traditional blue stocking. Personal foul, face oh. mask, defense. Woo. Tough call. That's a First judgment down. call. I, from way up here, it looked inadvertent, like he was just trying to make the tackle. Yeah, it didn't use it to bring him down. But uh, look at Coach Unruh. And that's what Coach Unruh is trying to, <laughs> trying to make that same point. So it's first down and 10 now after the penalty. Salvatore gets the snap, but another flag. And the Comets are reacting as if it's against them. Norberg jumped, I think, on the line of scrimmage. He picked his hand up off the ground. Dead ball, illegal procedure. Interesting, uh, in the uniforms today, you look at uh, the Sterling Newman team, not one of them has any sleeves. They're all with short sleeves. And you look on the other side of the ball, you got a lot of the, of the, the white sleeves on Carthage. So I don't know if that means that uh, Newman's a little tougher, but today they're not worried about the elements, I don't think. Salvatore rolls out right. Had a running lane, throws, and it's incomplete. Shippert was the intended receiver and just couldn't hang on. Salvatore, 20 of 52 on the season coming into today, passing seven TDs, only two interceptions. So like I said earlier, Reed, no interceptions on the season and Salvatore with just two. So they've both been uh, very good when it comes to that. That's Those are pretty good numbers, right? Yeah, they, they, it's good. And, and he's, I, you know, I've seen some games here from Newman. He's pretty accurate. He throws the ball. Well, that was a nice throw there. Um, a, a lot of steam on that ball. Just unfortunately couldn't hold on to it, but he's, uh, he's an accurate passer. Second and 15 now for the Comets. Salvatore thought about throwing his opposite number. Zach Reed, the quarterback defensive back, brings him down at the line of scrimmage, maybe a little behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. Nice call by uh, the defense here at Carthage. They bring Zach Reed on a corner blitz right into the play. He makes a great stop for, for a big loss, uh, bringing up third and, and long situation. And this is, a tough, this is tough duty for Newman. Bill Lapp in his 15th year as Carthage defensive coordinator. And Jim Unruh is blessed with a great staff there at Carthage. Under nine minutes to go now here. Second quarter, third and 17. Salvatore will throw with the wind at his back. Throws for the sideline. It's shippered again and broken up. Jason Wildrick there on the coverage. Nice play by the all-conference defensive back for Carthage. Yeah, it was a good effort. Wildrick almost had the ball. Here's the play, just a straight drop back. Salvatore's looking towards the sideline all the way. Throws the ball. It's just a little bit underthrown. Wildrick goes up, makes the play. Good effort on, on both sides of the ball there. Reed and Biddenstadt back to receive Jake Harrison's punt. 
Oh, and they came close again to blocking it. Biddenstadt fair catch called for at the 20 yard line after a punt of 38. So Jake gets the wind and that helps him a little bit, sure. a little bit uh, closer to his average. He's a great story. Jake Harrison was a, line back, a lineman, played both ways, had back problems. They said, look, you can have surgery and all that, or you know, or you're gonna have to give up football. Well, he didn't quite give up football. He moved to punter, and he's been a great inspiration to this team, according to his head coach, Mike Poposi. In fact, last week, one of the linemen forgot something, on, didn't know where he was on a special teams play, and Jake got in there on one special teams play. So he is really still contributing to this team in quite a ways. Watts. David Watts, the ball carrier. First down. It's about down by number 12, Clayton Norbert. Newman is playing seven men across the front here on defense. Seven guys across the front with two linebackers, nine guys in the box, and they have two safeties back. I think that's one of the reasons we've seen uh, Carthage throw four times, because they want to take advantage of it. They're not real good at it because they don't do it a lot, but really they have to take advantage of it. Now they're back into a 52 defense here. So mixing up their defenses. Second Newman. and six, Carthage going against the wind. Idris looking for a lane to open. Steps it up inside and gains about three. Right, Idris, the ball carrier. Bring up third down, Zach about number 20, a Zach long Holmes. two. Attention to the stadium. Zach Holmes, Good number 20. Junior. He plays defensive end, 5'11", 180, small. He's a junior. Did a great job on the end of the line of scrimmage there, fighting off the defense, the fighting off the offensive Memorial block, Stadium. containing the play, and, and keeping it to a short game. Great Mr. job Holmes, by Zach Holmes, number 20. The southwest corner of Memorial Stadium. Thank you. Here you see that seven-man front with two linebackers. It's a bit crowded. Idris, nowhere to go. Idris on the carry. Back to by 20, Zach Holmes. Just uh, a host of comets there. That was uh, <laughs> a good representation of the blue machine there to stop Brock Idris on That's third down. That'll four, bring up a punt two, now two, for Carthage. Idris averages. 33 yards per kick. He'll be going into that win. Oh, beautiful kick. Gets off a oh, nice beautiful. kick. And it's Welty fielding it at the 32. Makes the first man miss. Brings it to the near side where he's brought down. Just inside the 40-yard line. Rogers and Wildrick in on the stop after a punt of 37 and a seven-yard game. Thanks to Dave Berkson for the great statistical help up here and spotting help today. And you've got a helper over there too. Yep, my son Brian Bradshaw. He's here, he's in eighth grade. He's dreaming someday of being on this field. <laughs> we want the exclusive if he makes it, all right? <laughs> we will, we will. And here's the give to Norberg and somebody had him by the shirt. Clayton Reed ends up with a football. Clayton Norberg, as we mentioned, slowed by injury after gaining 919 yards in the first 13 games of the season. Six yards. Second Gets six down. yards. So far, uh, if you if you take away the uh, the block kick, this is the kind of game that Newman needs to play today. They want to just make first downs. Um, there you see their their rushing average. They're, they don't do anything real fancy. It's just this five yards, cloud of dust, keep moving the chains. And that's what they've been doing in the first half. Here's Norberg again, and he's close to the 50-yard line. Looks like he has a first down. They said five yards and a cloud of dust, but you don't get that on this field. It's a cloud of charcoal. Yeah. They've got yeah. the uh, tires. A little rubber yeah. underneath <laughs> there. Yeah. It's interesting. They're doing that now on grass fields, too. Sure. Carthage yeah. dumped a bunch of that on there this year, and they're going to uh, do it again next year, I think. 40,000 pounds, something like that next year of uh, tires to help. What does that do, help with drainage and things I, like I don't, that? I don't know, but it's a big deal. And, and they get help now, I think, because it's uh, using uh, old tires, they get really big benefits from the government. A lot of, lot of schools are now going there because they get benefits, financial benefit for using those recycled tires. Thank you. We like that. We there like to are. encourage that. There you see it, just a little bit short. Be third and just a little bit for Newman. Oh, 
542 to go, second quarter, 7-6, the Carthage lead. And the Carthage fans urging on their defense here. Blue Boys shift on defense. Here's Norberg, and he's got the first down and more into Carthage territory. That's the third time they've shifted uh, to that gap eight defense. First time they got an offensive uh, an offsides penalty on Newman. Second time they did it on uh, uh, fourth and short, and now they did it again. And uh, Newman's doing a nice job. They just they just fold down, block, and get a three-yard gain. And uh, it hasn't really been that effective yet uh, for the Carthage Blue Boys. First and 10 for the Comets at the 48. Here's Norberg again. Watts hit him pretty hard, and he's brought down at the 45-yard line. Norberg is a 6'1", 200-pound senior. He's got some fresh legs uh, after not playing much the last couple weeks because of that ankle sprain. He only had one carry in the semifinal game at Maroa. Well, they do a good job spraying the ball, so these guys aren't going to get tired, these running backs, because they, they, they share the wealth. and. Uh, I think, again, that's going to help them as the game uh, progresses here. Second and seven. It's Dreesen's, the fullback. Wildrick has him and gets a little help bringing him down at the 41. That'll bring up third and three. He's shaking up a little bit. There's some hitting going on down there. And Dreesen's limps to the sideline. You see it's just a turn and give. The Dreesen makes a nice cut. Here you'll see the opening. Oh, we don't have the replay. Made a nice cut. And uh, then he was uh, tackled by a host of Carthage uh, Blue Boys. Got bent back a little bit. And uh, I think he's going to be all right. He's on the bench. I think he'll be OK. Uh, but he did get hit pretty hard. Uh, Watts gave him a pretty good lick there. Mm -hmm. Sam Gallardo in for Newman at end, number 81. Third and a long two. Here's Welty, and the play's blown dead. So we may have delay a game. Can't be delay a game. We had a guy hurt, injured. I wouldn't think they would get a delay here. What's going to be the call? We had a dead ball, delay of game, wow. offense. That's tough. And that's Mike. I can see Mike Deposi from here. Hey. Yeah, we had a guy. We're trying hurt. to get a guy off the field. Right. It's been two a little bit questionable calls, I think, that face mask call and this one. But they're do hey, they're doing a good job. We can't we can't get on the referees. No. I wouldn't want to be down there, no. I'll tell you that. No. I'd rather be up here. There's free food up here, are you That's kidding? Right. Oh, no, third <laughs> down, third, yes. well, that is a big penalty, putting them third and long here. Third and seven. 353 to go first half. Newman trailing by a point. And a fumble on the snap. Salvatore dove in there. I think he might have gotten it back. Yep, they got it back. Woo. And then he gained a couple. Yep. <laughs> That's a tough way to get them, though. Carthage has been close to blocking. We're getting a punt know, formation here. They have been close, just missing uh, two times getting this punt. So uh, they've already blocked one on the quick kick. Harrison to kick. End over end job at Biddenstadt and and a pretty good mark I think for let's see where will it be marked well, now he's walking the sideline. The Carthage ball when we come back after these local messages. And welcome back to Memorial Stadium on the campus of the University of Illinois. More football coming your way. Alexis United taking on Stockton in the 1A state championship at 4. Greg and I will be back for Cole City against Lombard Montini in 4A. And then 3A, Driscoll Catholic is back. And they take on Bureau Valley there in 3A this year after winning two straight in 4A. Reed back to throw. Looks downfield, throws it into a crowd. Wildrick had some company there, got a tip at it, but a penalty flag on the play as Edwards was there on the coverage as well. Got a legal man downfield on Carthage. Again, they roll to the left, and uh, 
Reed looks back, goes, tries to go deep down the middle. Good defense uh, by those two safeties um, from uh, Newman. But we're going backwards here for Carthage. They're going to decline, it looks like, huh? Seems like we've had a lot of penalties so far in this We had game. an ineligible had man downfield, decline, second down. I guess when you don't throw a lot, you're maybe we'll have that every once in a while. Sure. Well, you know, it's interesting, you know, they're putting, playing the seven-man front. They are just uh, daring Carthage to throw the football, and that's something that they really don't want to do. Um, but that big front um, of a Newman's defensive line is stopping their run so far in this game. They haven't been too successful. Second and ten. Here's the give to Biddenstad around the right side and brought down just across the 20. Clayton Norberg there on the stop. Almost seems like Biddenstad is kind of maybe hesitating a little bit too much, waiting for blocks to develop instead of just getting that quick hit for five or six yards. And, yeah. uh, there hasn't been a lot of lanes for them to run in. I, Newman's defense has been playing great today, and then this Carthage office isn't used to this. They're used to seeing big holes that they can run through and get off to the races, but uh, Newman's doing a nice job. And a nice time out here uh, by Coach Poposi. Uh, he's going to uh, hopefully stop the them. Still running, yeah, the though. clock is still running. They haven't stopped the clock. Um, but uh, it's a good timeout. Force them to punt uh, into the wind and maybe get an opportunity to score before half. Uh, yeah, the clock's been running for a full 30 seconds and nobody's noticed it yet. How many officials are down there? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I if I notice it, it's got to be obvious. Yeah, I think they're, they're going to just have to wait and reset somebody, the clock. <laughs> somebody get on the cell phone to the uh, clock operator. All right, we're going to take a break here on the IHSA TV network. Be right back. And we're back while we were away. Zach Reed ran for a first down for the Carthage Blue Boys. It wasn't that exciting. No. But it was a first down. <laughs> All right, it looks like they've got the clock figured out. 240 and counting here in the second quarter. Carthage scored first. Newman answered, but had their extra point blocked, and that's the difference in this ball game. Reed gives to Watts. The big fella hasn't gotten many carries, but he gets out near the 45-yard line and gets about nine yards on that game. We haven't really heard much from him, and uh, that was a nice play up inside, and the big guy just rumbled for nine yards. I think they're going to have to go back to that. A lot of the stuff they've been trying to do with Bitten staff around the outside has been getting stopped. Start pounding Watts on the inside, make them think inside conscious. That will open up Reed and Bittenstaff on the outside. Watts, nine yards a carry during the regular season. And not much that time. But a first down for David Watts, who's a senior. Even though they had Ashton Grunwald, an uh, all-stater last year, Watts led them in carry. So that tells a little something about that young man. Yeah. Well, they have to establish him. He opens up everything else. They've got to have that fullback getting yards in the middle to open up the cross sweep. First down for the Blue Boys. Well, and it's just Watts up the middle, Watts up the middle, Watts up the middle. What the heck? And he got about four yards, five yards on that gain, and that's – you do that every play, that's good enough, right? Except when you've got a minute 20 to go. So right. I think we might see something here. Uh, don't be surprised if we see Zach uh, Reed pull it out here and, and look down the field. You quarterbacks always want to throw, no matter <laughs> how much time's left. <laughs> Gives to Watts. He keeps churning. He's got three guys on him. Football came loose. And it's Newman ball. Watts had three guys on him. His forward progress was stopped, but he fumbled. And it'll be Newman Ball when we come back after this network break. And we're back, 107 to go here, second quarter. 
Lee Hall, Greg Bradshaw, 7-6, Carthage leading Sterling Newman. Happy Thanksgiving holiday to you and yours. Hope you had a, a delightful day. Let's take another look at the Carthage miscue, their second fumble, and they've lost them both. They've been giving the ball to Watts over here the last three or four plays. Look at them working, trying to pull that ball out. I'm surprised they didn't stop with forward progress, but they gave uh, Newman the ball. They pulled it out, covered it, and uh, now they've got uh, 55 yards to go in a minute seven. Sometimes you're almost better off to just go down and, and, and not try and fight for that extra half yard. Norberg goes in motion. Salvatore rolls out right, looks downfield, has a man. Is it complete? It is. And that's Gray Harrison, 23-yard completion. Nice throw back across the field by Salvatore. Great catch, diving catch. They're on the move on the 33-yard line. Clock will start if they set the chains. Now, Gray Harrison doesn't show up on the stats. That unofficially is his first catch of the year. Salvatore back to throw again. Here comes Reed on the blitz around the end. and. Chases him down. And Mike Poposi will call timeout and stop the clock here with 40 seconds left. Again, Reed coming off the corner, makes a big play. A timeout here. A nice play uh, again by Zach Reed coming off the corner. And uh, stopping a little of the momentum here before half. Now coming into this game, the clock, they're going to clock, run the clock down and reset it again, apparently. Uh, rich playoff history for both these schools. Of course, we mentioned that they met a couple of times in the playoffs. Look at that, 23 appearances for Carthage, 16 for Sterling Newman. 45 and 18 for Jim Unruh, 34 and 13 for Newman, four titles for Carthage, two for Newman. Sterling won the 1A championship in 90 and 94. They finished second in 93 and 98. Carthage won state championships in 95, 98, 99 to 2000, all in class 1A. Now since the move to 2A, they're 0 and 2 in state championship games. We were talking about Harrison before as we get down here to the end of the half. He has not attempted a field goal all year, although he can kick the ball. He's a great kickoff man. All right, they're going to keep the time on the field. There's uh, appears to be some kind of a problem with the clock. Salvatore's back to throw again. And one hops it to Welty. Now I say that Gray Harrison, unofficially, that was his first catch of the year. Coming into the game, Salvatore had 20 completions, 13 to Jeremy Shippert, 7 to Chris Welty, 13 and 7 makes 20, so that's my assumption now. It's now official. That's enough. It is now an <laughs> official first well, catch. Well, we don't want to uh, short Gray Harrison, uh, but uh, the stats that are provided via the IHSA wouldn't show a one a guy that had only a, a couple of receptions probably, but according to our stats, that was his first catch. Salvatore back to throw on third and 12. Lofts it deep, and it's picked off by Jason Wildrick at the 12-yard line. That's, that's uh, I guess you could say that's as good as a punt if you weren't trying to score in the final 30 seconds of the second quarter. Nice play by Wildrick. He's playing his half. Here's the play. Drop back, straight drop back by Salvatore. He looks left all the way. Wildrick's reading his eyes and sees him looking over to the left. Waits till the ball goes up in the air and does a nice job coming over, catching the ball here. You'll see it, watch him jump up nice and high. Makes the great catch and uh, prevents the uh, any score here before the end of the half. You would imagine Carthage would be content to run out the clock here and go to halftime with a one point lead. Newman can stop the clock one more time. They've got a timeout left. Yeah, 
7-6 our score here at the break. A mixed, uh, a blocked extra point, not a missed extra point, a blocked extra point. The difference in this Class 2A state championship ball game as time runs out, the teams head for the locker rooms and uh, we've seen maybe a few more passes, but uh, not a lot of completions, maybe a few more passes than we'd expect, but uh, a pretty close, hard fought game, pretty much a game of field position. The turnovers have, uh, have uh, kind of reared their ugly head for Carthage. Yeah, we talk a lot about Carthage's offense and talk about Newman and what they run out of the wishbone. It's the defense that really kind of controlled this game, made them punt, and uh, I think that favors Newman. Uh, again, we talked about that, that uh, they have only a few guys going both ways. they got big guys up front. I think that gives advantage to Newman. We'll see what happens here in the second half. All right, let's go down to the field of Mike Klepties with Jim Unruh. All right, thanks a lot, Lee and Greg. Jim Unruh, first half. You get on the board good, but still, you go to the locker room, you're up one. If you knew that going in, you'd take it, Coach. Yeah, we, we knew coming into this game was going to defense, be a defensive battle. Both teams have great defenses, and right now, score is uh, pretty indicative of both teams' great defenses. Jim, I'm not trying to predict what you're going to say in the locker room, but one thing I'm sure you'll talk about is the fact that the guys have put the ball on the ground a couple of times. Well, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit, but we won't overemphasize it. Big thing is we just got to keep playing our toes, keep playing aggressively for 24 more minutes and uh, see what happens. Jim, good luck. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jim. All right, Jim Unruh, Carthage head coach. His team is leading right now 7-6 to six over Newman Catholic at the halftime intermission. Lee, Greg, back to you guys. All right, Mike, thanks a lot. 7-6, our halftime score here in the Class 2A state championship ball game. We'll be back with more from Champaign after these local messages. We're back at halftime of the Class 2A championship game. Carthage is leading Newman Catholic 7-6. And, well, the team right now that's smiling, that's Carthage, because we are with the principal, Brad Hall. We'll talk to Brad in a moment. These are the Carthage cheerleaders. And do we have a cheer? Do we have a dance? Or Okay. All right. Take it away. All right, we're going to put you on the spot here. What's okay, your name? Allison. All right, Allison, what's the best thing about being a Carthage cheerleader? Winning. Winning. Yeah. <laughs> you win a lot, don't yeah, you? Yeah, it's fun. Allison, what year in school are you? I'm a junior. Junior. All right, and what's your name? Put you on the spot, too. My Ladies name's Jillian. One more time. Jillian. Jillian. Okay, we had the speaker go in the PA system. Okay. What year are you, Jillian? I'm a junior, too. Junior. All right, I'll ask you the same thing. Best thing about being a Carthage cheerleader? It's just so much fun hanging out with everyone and being able to win. Yeah. All right, you're 24 minutes away from a state title. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? Totally. All right, thanks a lot, Carthage cheerleaders. Now, we have Brad Hall, the Carthage principal. And, you know, Brad, I've done this for a while, and every year I get to interview you, or the Carthage principal period, and I know you're, you're really enjoying this. It's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's, it's really a community Thanksgiving that we had together, came down, had a big meal with the par with the parents and the kids last night, and, and just, you can see, we have 2,500 people in the community and 1,000 in the stands, so it's a real community thing. Brad, I know we talked before, you're, you're a big, big football fan, and, you know, now you've been around enough, you've gotten to know Jim Unruh really well, and he just seems like, you know, he's a great football coach, but he just seems like a great guy. Jim is, uh, Jim is about as laid back a football coach as you're ever going to find. Jim, uh, Jim motivates the kids through hard work, uh, but he's not a yeller and a screamer. He's, uh, he's, they, they, preparation is the key to our success, and this personality driven of a, not Jim, but a whole great bunch of coaches we have. Brad, what is the best thing about being principal at Carthage High School? The community support for the school, uh, not just football, but in everything we do, our band, our, other sports, academics, the community is so much behind the school and so much a part of the school that, that it in a lot of ways makes my job really easy. Brad Hall, Carthage Principal, thanks a lot. Good luck second hand. Thank you. All right, we will hear from the other teams, cheerleaders and principal, right after these local sponsors give us their messages and what they think about how things are going so far today.
All right, we're back at Memorial Stadium, halftime of the 2A game. Carthage leading Newman Catholic 7-6, and now we have the Newman Catholic cheerleaders and Kelly Grove. She has been elected the, the spokesperson of this cheerleading group, and Kelly's a senior. And Kelly, what's, what's fun about being down here? Oh, just being with everybody, the Newman family, is just a great experience just to be around. <laughs> Kelly, you've got the, I like the headband stocking caps. It, it's helping today, aren't they? <laughs> yes, uh, good luck charms. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're down just one point, so I know the cheers are going to be very enthusiastic. You have a cheer or a dance? A cheer. Okay, we got a cheer. Go ahead. All right, the Newman Catholic cheerleaders, well done. Good luck the second half, Kelly. Thank you. All right, and now we have Father Paul Lipinski representing Newman Catholic. And Father, first of all, thanks for joining us and talking to us. And we got a football game, one point difference. We certainly do. It's a defensive battle. I just love when they get into the mix of it, and it's close, and they get the fans in it, and the players in it. It's excellent. You know, I was talking to a lot of people on your sideline about your head coach, Mike Poposi, and uh, people just couldn't stop talking about him. And a lot of people said, yeah, he's a great football coach, but he even teaches the players more about football. He's even he's that good of a person. Absolutely. He makes it a tremendous blend of God, sports, character, you know, live life on beyond football. You know, he's just tremendous that way. Great motivator for young people. And that's the thing I noticed. He, he's not real boisterous during the sideline. When he speaks, you listen. But he's pretty, you know, even keeled for most of the, the half that I saw at least. Absolutely. He's mild manner, but don't tick him off. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking with Father Paul Lipinski with Newman Catholic. And Father, first of all, how big of a football fan are you? I know your favorite team's the Comets. Huge, huge football fan. I love football. I watch it on TV, uh, pros, high school. I love high school, love college. I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Father, just the environment down here. I mean, the field's in great shape. Uh, you know, the crowd's enthusiastic and everything. Just, you know, has it soaked in being being here yet for you personally and maybe also as an administrator? Absolutely. We were, I was down here in 1990, actually, at ISU when we played uh, Bloomington Catholic, and that was exciting. But, you know, it's a new group of kids, and this group is a unique group. They're a very, very spiritual group. They're a group that's cohesive. They're a family. They identify with the community. It, it's just an amazing group of young men. Everything I heard about your team going in during the playoffs, they got better each week. Is that did you find that to be the case? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, we don't have an all-stater, but we have an all-state team that just moves its character. I think it's its character they put on the line out there. You know, Father, one thing I like about this game, and I'm not just saying this because I'm talking to you. What I saw on the field are two very well-coached teams, yes. and that's worth watching. Absolutely, and you know, that's one of the things that any high school should have is a good football program. But that takes a good coach to do. How long have you been at Newman Catholic? Uh, this is my fourth year. That was there in 1993. You have fun? I'm always ready and willing, let me tell you. <laughs> Father Paul Lipinski, thanks for talking to us. Good luck the second half. All right. We have the second half coming up, but before we start the second half, we're going to send it to a break and hear from these local sponsors. And welcome back to Memorial Stadium. Lee Hall, Greg Bradshaw, halftime of our state 2A state championship game. The Carthage Blue Boys leading the Blue Machine of Sterling Newman, seven to six. Let's take a look at some of those first half numbers. A real defensive battle out there, Greg. Uh, you mentioned uh, the first downs that Carthage didn't have a first down uh, until late in the first quarter, I believe. There weren't many for either team. Right. And there you get a look at the rushing yard. Boy, the defense really, really locking down on both sides. Uh, Carthage has uh, three or four pass attempts, but for no yards. And uh, Salvatore completed uh, a, a couple there as they were trying to score in the final minute. Seven penalties combined uh, there for between the two teams for 70 yards of penalties and time of possession. Newman has the edge there, but it's uh, Carthage with the edge on the scoreboard. It's really been a defensive struggle. Let's go to the highlights. And uh, we'll see some of the highlights here. Not many offensive highlights this half. <laughs> no. 
Here's the first touchdown. It's just a give here, and Bittenstaff makes a couple moves and then lowers the shoulder, gets in the end zone, gets the scoring started early. That was about a minute and a half in the game. Here's the best running play of the game, Dreesen around the outside. Um, he gets about a 25-yard gain, um, but unfortunately they didn't score at that point. Um, but that, that was the, the actually, the, I think, the biggest run of the game. Here's the touchdown. Here he is, lowering his shoulder, getting in from five yards out after a turnover yeah, a again. Fumble, right? They came uh, about 35 yards short field. Um, here's the fumble right before, about with about three or four minutes to go in the in the half. Nice job stripping the ball, giving them an opportunity. But you'll see um, as we continue with the next highlight that uh, it was stopped by uh, Idris making the interception right before the half. So the turnovers. Here's here's the interception here. Drop back, straight drop back here. Throws the ball up. You see Wildrick actually comes over and makes a nice play and stops the drive before the half. Again, mostly defensive highlights uh, we had in the first half. Let's take a look at uh, your keys to the game before the game and uh, and see how both teams kind of give a little checklist here and see how they're doing after uh, after 24 minutes. Well, I think the emotion factor, I think they've overcome the beginning of the game. I think they're now into the, the rhythm and flow. Third and long, they've done a nice job. Uh, against uh, that Newman offense. And uh, again, they only had uh, four first downs, so I think they put them in third and long situations and forced the pass. Strike early and often. They did strike early, early but <laughs> yeah. not often. <laughs> right. And here's Newman, survived to the fourth, and they have, they're have they doing that. And I think that definitely gives an advantage to Newman. On first down, they have not really mixed it up on first down. I, I like to see them throw a little bit, because I really think uh, Salvatore's done a pretty nice job. Uh, throwing the football, but uh, they haven't done it on first down. And then lastly, unplug Watts. Did a nice job to right before half, we saw Watts get about three or four good gains. All right, let's go hear from Mike Poposi. All right, Lee, Greg, thanks a lot. We are with Coach Poposi. And Coach, well, I'll tell you what, after that early touchdown, which Carthage had great through. Home of the fifth ranked Fighting Illini, Bruce Weber. And over here, it's Football galore. Up next, Alexis United taking on Stockton for the 1A state championship. Cole City and Montini coming up at 4 o'clock. And then the nightcap, Driscoll Catholic playing the 3A state championship game this year against Bureau Valley. We've seen Driscoll Catholic a couple of straight years in the 4A title game, and they moved on us. Yep, but uh, they're a good football team again. Well, Carthage is going to get the football. They have not got into any rhythm offensively yet in this football game. So this is an important drive for them. They don't necessarily have to get points on the board, but I think they would like to see two, three first downs establish some things. They have not been able to get outside at all. They did establish Watts a little Jake bit right before half on the inside. So uh, I think it's a really important drive half. for Carthage. Harrison will kick for Newman. And again, he's got the wind. It's a right to left wind. Reed and Bittenstadt back, and Reed will catch it at the goal line and bring it out. Hurdles a man at the 15, looking for room at the 20. He's outside to the 30, 35 still on his feet, and steps out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. Nice run back by Zach Reed, 39 yards on the return. When Newman was headed that way, Malid has kicked it into the end zone. Twice. Right. Yeah, great effort by Zach Reed. I actually thought they might call a touchback. I thought his back foot was in the end zone, which would be immediate touchback, but they did not call it. He got to bring it out in great field it was, position. It was awfully close. You're right. Okay, here's the famous wing tee from the Blue Boys. Reed under center. Gives to Watts up the gut. And that is one play that's worked for them. Yeah, I, I think they're going to continue to establish until they stop him. They're going to pound him. Then they'll be able to pull it out and get to the outside. So uh, I don't think uh, that's the last we're going to see of that play. It, it, it's always fun to see what happens as you, as you come out second half. First half, uh, Newman was had that seven-man front. Now they're in a five-man front. They're mixing things up. Um, but a, a nice job, I think, on first down there by Carthage to get six yards. Second and three, the give is again to Watts, and he's close to a first down out near the 49-yard line. He's 5'10", 225 pounds. Watts again. Sometimes All-Stater, Illinois High School Football Coaches Association All-Stater, and 
There you saw a look at uh, Hall of Fame coach Mike Capos. Third and one. Third and one for the Blue Boys. They lead it seven to six. Watts has it. First down, Carthage. Watts, the ball carrier, tackled by number 12, Clayton Norberg. It's the Sterling down. Newman defense did a number on Leonard Parks of Aurora Forsyth last week. All-state running back. We saw him play against New Berlin, and he ran wild that game. They held him to 175-yard run. 15 other carries for Parks. The Newman defense held him to six yards on those carries. Eight of those rushes were for negative yards. So this Newman defense is no stranger to shutting down great runners, and this is a great running attack by Carthage. Well balanced, as Greg has mentioned. Watts again for about three. You know, Carthage averages 30 points a game for the first half. In the first half of, the, of this, uh, all the games this season, averaging 30 points a game. Really, if, if they wouldn't have got the block punt and started on the five yard line, they might not have a, a point on the board. So you're right, this Newman, Newman defense is for real. Um, they're coming to play today and they've done a really nice job against this high powered offense. Here again is a seven man front that's really given some problems um, to Carthage. Second and eight, Idris in motion. He gets the ball and he's down inside the 45 where he's brought down by Clayton Norberg. Norberg again on the tackle for Newman Catholic. That'll bring up third and about four, maybe five. You get the sense from watching Carthage that they need a big play, something to really get them fired up and, and sparked. And I think their guy, the guy that seems to have the most big play ability, at least today, is Zach Reed. He's really shown us some good speed. So uh, there's, there's what he's done in the air, but he's really done some great things uh, with his legs. And official stop play and a flag and a timeout. For Carthage, they were pretty close to uh, delay a game, looks like. Time out for Carthage. Back after these local messages. And we're back, 8.47 to go here. Third quarter. Carthage on third and five. Into the win. Big play here. Here's the give to Biddenstadt, looking for something to develop and just can't get anything going. Newman has stuffed that play all morning and now almost all. Right. Great pursuit, Peterson comes down the line. Again, a big athletic Peterson, 6'2", 235 pounds, moves down the line and makes a great play on that outside sweep by Carthage. Brock Idris to punt. And Edwards runs away from it. It'll take a Carthage bounce and be down at about the 16, 17 yard line where Newman will take over after a punt of 28 into the win. Well, advantage to Newman. They did a nice job stopping that, the opening drive out of Carthage. And now we get to see what they, the adjustments that they have made at halftime with their offense. Before we go any further, we want to send out get well wishes to Rob Dunham. He owns the radio station in Carthage, had a heart attack a couple of days ago. He uh, convalesced at the hospital in Peoria. He's back home watching today and uh, rooting on Jim Unruh and his Blue Boys. He'd love to be here today. Our best wishes to him for a speedy recovery. The Carthage coach is remembering him today. And now on first down, it's Jason Prendergast with a nice gain for another first down. Gain of about 11. Here it is, he just a turn and give, and he makes a nice cutback. He reads his blocks, another good cutback and block. In terms of upfield, and gets a nice uh, gain on first down for Newman. Prendergast has done a nice job cutting back today. Carthage stopping the play at the point of attack, and he cuts back and been able to get extra yardage. 8-10 to go, third quarter, out of the wishbone. Here's the give to Dreesens, and he's stopped by Miletus for a loss of a yard. Savas Miletus missed the Tremont game, the first round of the playoffs with a knee injury, but he comes up with the play there to stuff that running play. 
they've had a lot more success running the ball to the right today. Um, so I, I would suspect that they will be running more plays that direction because when they come left, they're getting stuffed. Second and 11. This is Welty, and he's met at the line of scrimmage. Skyler McKinley on the stop. 260-pound senior with the stop. So that's two in a row for a loss of yardage. The Carthage defense stepping it up here a little bit in the early going in the third quarter. Great play by McKinley. He made a great play to start the game. Again, about a three or four yard loss. Um, so that left side, or excuse me, the right defensive side of Carthage coming to play football today. Third and 11. Salvatore rolls. Had, uh, he was stopped in the backfield, but slipped loose and it was Swearingen bringing it down. Huff had him in the backfield, but couldn't hang on. But slowed him down just enough that the rest of his uh, cohorts could come and make the tackle, forcing a punt again. And this has been um, so a scary, a scary uh, play for uh, Newman. They've been close to getting it blocked every time. It's that one away. Middenstadt has to let it go, and it's down at the 19-yard line. Kind of a tricky wind out there to try and field a punt. 52-yard punt for Harrison with the wind. is long, 65 this year, so pretty good foot into that one. Carthage will take over inside the 20. 47 yards on that punt. Carthage takes over at the 20-yard line. It's been kind of a field position, field position turnover game. Um, there hasn't been a lot of offense. We've had two scores that have come off turnovers with a short field. Nobody has been able to sustain a long drive. Carthage went five yards after the blocked punt. Uh, to start the game, and then uh, Newman came in from 35 yards, so no one has gone the length of the field. Hand off to Watts, that left side. 31, David Watts to gain a couple here. that time. Tackled by number 12, Clayton Norberg. Five forty to go now, third quarter. 7-6, the Carthage lead. Jim Unruh says it all the time. With our system, we don't do anything people don't know we're going to do. They just do it better than most. Newman offering quite a challenge here. Reed rolls. Cuts back. And gets close to a first down. I think he's going to be just Zachary short. Young keeper. Again, they rolled out. Reed to the left. This is a run all the way. And he cuts back, makes a nice gain. He's he's got you get the sense he gets almost scared if you're Newman when he has the ball. He's got so much quickness, and he's the guy I think that might have the potential to break this game open. Makes a nice nine-yard gain there. You heard of a, the family tree at Carthage? They have the it's family tree. Zach, the quarterback, his dad, Bill is the uh, athletic director and assistant coach. His brother Joe. We saw him play a couple of years ago. He was on the 2000 game championship game. Grandma and Grandpa cook pork chops at the football game. I mean, it's a family affair for the Reeds. <laughs> Third down and one here. Watts. And a good gain for Watts on third down. Ball loose on the ground. Was it whistled? It was whistled dead. So. David Watts on the carry. Well, oh, you got to be, you got to be concerned about that. Uh, first down for Carthage. You got to hang on to that football, and uh, there must be some hitting going. Watts got two hands on this football, but there's some guys hitting out here. He almost gets a, it stripped right there. He's got two hands on it. Look at. He was just definitely down. Definitely down, but they're ripping that ball. Yep. Good job by the Newman defense. Watts gives Carthage the first down. He has it again to the left side and brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Wow, That's I'm Mike LeMay, 6'1", 180-pound junior Lame. with the stop. No gain. No gain, second and 10. If you like defense, this is, this is your kind of ball game. Well, they're lining up again. That was the seven-man front, like daring Carthage to throw the football. We were there, uh, Reed's 0 for 4 today. Um, but they may have to throw the football here to get some, some real positive yardage. Idris in motion. He runs behind Reed. 
Reed pitches it to him at the last minute and it's a fumble. It was a bad pitch and Newman recovers. Clayton Norberg was there. It didn't look like Idris was ready for it. He thought, I think he thought Reed was going to keep it. Yeah, they didn't have a like, good pitch relationship. It should be three or four yards separated. And you'll see here, here comes Reed, a good fake into Watts. Here comes Reed, they get real close together. And when he turns to pitch it, it's right on top of yep. him too quick. Yep. Didn't have time to adjust to it. And a big turnover. They and call that spacing in basketball. Yeah, yeah they needed that, that pitch relationship. Third fumble of the game for Carthage. It cost him a touchdown in the first quarter. And Newman will try to capitalize here. That's Dreesen's the fullback. Down at about the 31. Dreesen's gain of four. With the win, short field, 35 yards to go. This is a huge opportunity for Newman. And a big challenge for this Carthage defense. As good as they've been, they've been susceptible in the state championship games we've seen before. Norberg. It's about a couple. Norberg Last year in the championship game against Iroquois West, Carthage's defense allowed 463 total yards, 381 through the air. So they have been. We saw the 41-40 overtime game against Toledo the year before that. So the Carthage defense has had some problems once they've gotten down on the big turf here. The quality of play that they see having to play four quarters is not something they're used to. Here's the give to Welty. He's around the left side down to the 15. Chris Welty out at the 15 yard line. Nice play here, fake in the line. Here comes Welty, nice bounce out. Gets to the outside. Nice stiff arm, big game. 13 yards for Chris Welty. Yeah, he hasn't had a lot of carries, but he's fresh. We talked about that, it's mixing the ball up. A lot of different guys carrying the football. Both teams have good balance when it comes to rushing the ball. Here's Dreesen's, not much there. Watts and Swearingen in on the stop for Carthage. Nate Dreesen's on the carry. Brought down by 32. Gain of about three, seven, seven now. Seven. Minute 50 to go, third quarter. Just what Sterling likes, get some positive yardage. Moved. Now they're in four down territory. And they got to believe that they can get 10 yards in four downs. Here's Norberg around the right side. Down to almost the five yard line. Just short of the first down. Like you said, that's not a real big factor right now. Great surge by the up guys up front there. They were just moving the pile backwards. And that's the thing that, uh, that Newman wants. They've got these guys up front. And a couple of them go both sides of the ball. And uh, they're starting to uh, dominate that, that line of scrimmage. One minute to go, third quarter. Third and one. And that's first down for Jason Prendergast, the senior. Jason Prendergast carries for the Comet first down. He had 127 yards in the win last Saturday at Maroa Forsyth. Prendergast gives Newman the first down and goal at the four yard line. Dreesen's left side and in. Nate Dreesen's, the junior fullback, puts Newman on top. Nothing fancy right there. Power football. Keeps short, keeps his shoulders low to the ground and uh, pulls into the end zone. Back after this break on the IHSA TV network. And after the timeout, Newman will go for two here, which is an interesting call for Mike Paposi. We'll talk about that after the play. Salvatore fakes the handoff. 
Almost brought down, gets the ball away, and it's caught in the end zone. What a play. Ray Harrison comes up with the catch. The two-point conversion gives Newman the 14-7 lead on, uh, boy, I don't want to say a busted play, but Salvatore dodged a bullet there. And, boy, I've never had a, I don't think a two-point conversion has ever been quite that exciting. Great look here. individual effort here. He breaks the tackle, got a guy right in his face, lets it go just over the outstretched arms of the defense, and he scores. What a great play by Salvatore. And uh, just a huge play in this game now. It's a great call now that they made it. But 14-7 uh, to 7 really puts now the pressure on Carthage would they score. Boy, as a Cowboy fan, that reminds me of that Dwight Clark catch against the 49ers over Everson Walls. That, that brings back bad memories, but that was pretty close to that play. 14-7 to 7 now the score. And we want to tell you about the book written by the outstanding writer uh, in the Chicago area, Taylor Bell. It's six decades, 60 stories of IHSA basketball. Uh, and there you see some of the great stories involved there. Centralian, Dyke Edelman, uh, Peoria Manual, Peoria Central down there. IHSA.org slash bell. And there's a phone number you can get a hold of the IHSA 663-6399. I really would like to get that for Christmas if anybody that uh, there aren't many people that care about me. But if you're out there, please. <laughs> Jay Scheidler, Isaiah Thomas. I mean, there's some great stories in there. Peking, Cobden Apple Knockers. Where's Hebron? See, that's up by me up in the north yeah. part of the state. Hebron winning the state championship. They're in there. Is it in there? All right. I can, we got the word from the booth that it is in there. That is good. Taylor Bell is a great writer, and we've interviewed him many times on the IHSA TV network. Uh, that would be a great, great read. 14 to 7. Now Harrison will kick off. Reed had that great return the first time. He won't get a chance this time. 26 seconds left, third quarter, 14 to 7, the lead for Newman. And that, that two point conversion uh, call is interesting because you figure if Carthage scores again, which would make it 14 to 13, they go for two. They're going to go for two pretty much no matter what. When they when they get a touchdown, the only reason they didn't get the two point conversion the first time is because of the penalty. Right, and they if they kick there, if if Coach Poposti kicks, he's at least guaranteed a tie. But they made the great play to give now the advantage, because they can win the game now if they do not make a two point conversion. Here's the give to Watson. No room on the right side. He's had some success to the left side, but nothing doing that time. A lot of excitement out of the sidelines right now. There's a lot of energy uh, on the Newman sidelines and in the stands. Carthage needs a big play. They have not had one big play yet this game. They had uh, a nice uh, return by Reed, but really they haven't had any offensive play get more than eight, nine yards. So they really could use a big play. Clock was stopped. Some confusion on the sidelines. Or maybe the maybe I think the scoreboard clock is having yeah. problems. They're keeping the score on the field. So that's the end of the third quarter. 14-7. Sterling Newman the lead back after these local messages. Seven. Twelve minutes of football left here in class two A. The Sterling Newman fans. I've heard of wearing your heart on your sleeve, but they're wearing their colors on their face. 14-7. The Comets with the lead here going into the fourth quarter. Dave Ganaway of the IHSA just stepped into our booth. The scoreboard clock is not operating. They're gonna get it repaired. They are keeping the time on the field, so we won't be able to really help you out there. Zach Reed under center. The give is to Biddenstadt. Biddenstadt's gonna throw. Heaves it to the left side. Reed is open. And a completion across the 45 brought down at the 46. After a gain of 25, Jordan Edwards with the tackle after the little razzle-dazzle from the Blue Boys. Yep, they needed a big play, a good call by Coach Unruh. Nice throw here, Zach Reed. Get it to one of your uh, quickest guys out in the field. Open field tackle, nice open field tackle right there, but uh, that's a nice gain. Carthage needed to take some of the momentum away from Newman. It's a great way to start that drive. And how about the throw by Ryan Biddenstein? Pretty good arm. First and 10 at the 46. Watts brought down at the line of scrimmage by LeMay and a flag on the play. Oh, check that, it's Biddenstad on the carry. Right, Biddenstad on the carry. 
I guess I wouldn't be a very good defensive lineman because I bit on that <laughs> fake, didn't I? <laughs> but it wouldn't have mattered because if you'd have been fooled, it wouldn't have mattered. It's coming back. <laughs> That's right. They got a holding call. Because they were cheating on that play right. and they were holding. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what do we have at halftime? Seven We're holding. Total. Offense. Repeat first down. Well, Ooh, the, the, second and 24. Yeah, it negates a little bit of that first play and a little bit of that momentum. Yep. Reed rolls right this time. And has it knocked down. Matt Phillips knocks it down. Reed's pass knocked down. That's two or three knockdowns. It's a third knockdown. Nice job the by uh, the defensive down. line getting their hands up. Who you see on the bootleg. He's looking, he's looking, he looks back here for Wildrick, can't find him. Looking back across the middle, and it's blocked. Phillips is 6'6", six, six, and yeah. he used every bit of that plus his reach to knock that ball down. Third and 22 now. Now here you just don't want to make a big mistake. Check got, that second and 22. You, got, you have long yards, you don't want to make a big mistake because you're only down a touchdown. Reed fakes the handoff, keeps it himself, eludes a couple of tacklers. Edwards has him, and Norberg helps out and brings him down at the 45-yard line. Second big tackle from Edwards. Uh, on the uh, quarterback return pass, he made an open field tackle on Zach Reed, and right there, one-on-one -on -one again, out in the open. Zach Reed's very quick. He doesn't make that tackle. He's going uh, down the field for six points. Two big tackles uh, by Jordan Edwards. Jim Unruh is going to learn a lot about his team right here. They haven't trailed very often this year. They answered the bell against Orion when they didn't play their best game and won. Reed back to throw and incomplete. Alan Byers was the intended receiver. Back up wide receiver and that brings up fourth down. Now the good news if you're Carthage is the wind is behind you so should be able to uh, get pretty good field position on Newman. You can see some of the inexperience of the passing game there, just a little bit, and not on the same page. The receiver stopped, and, and Zachary thought he was going to continue and force the incompletion. Welty and Norberg back to receive. Brock Idris with the punt. Fielded by Norberg at the 18. And he's out to the 40, 45, and brought down at the 49-yard line of Carthage. 37-yard kick, 33-yard return. Well-executed wall. They had set that up. It was designed to come to their bench along their sideline. They had three or four blockers waiting uh, to make the blocks, and a great job cutting behind them for a big return and great field position again. For Newman. And Clayton Norberg showing you why he is a Sun Times All Stater on kick returns. The lead and the ball for Newman. Here's the handoff to Dreesen. Steps it inside down to about the 45 yard line as we approach the 10 minute mark. 10 minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Newman up 14 to 7. We talked about it. One of the keys of the game is that Newman would get into the fourth quarter. Um, against Carthage and uh, now you're going to start to see maybe some of those linemen up front start to pound a little bit and get that defense tired. Salvatore gives this time to Prendergast. Gain of about four, four-ish. It's unfortunate we don't have uh, the clock here because uh, this is a big part of this game right now is the clock management, eating up the clock as they as they drive the ball down. Um, it's important uh, that they uh, establish some, some first downs and third, use some of this clock. Third and three. And diving for it, Prendergast. Nice play. That's a first down for the Comets. Heads up running there by Prendergast. He knew exactly what he needed. Because he didn't have to dive there. He kind of was 
potentially could have tried to keep his feet and make one more move, but he knew he only needed three and a half yards. He dove for it and got it. First and 10, Newman. Give to Dreesens. Looked like Almost. the ball came loose. Carthage has it. Swearingen is there. Like a little miscue on the handoff. And Swearingen pounces on it for Carthage. They have the ball. Trailing by a touchdown here. Huge play. I think Swearingen gets his hand in there on the watch as he. Oh, we're not going to get the replay. It was a quick uh, opener to the left side of the fullback. I think Swearingen gets his hand in uh, in between the quarterback and the running back there and uh, pulled the ball loose and then fell on it, recovered it himself. Swearingen, the All-State lineman, gets the ball back for Carthage. Here's the give to Watson. He's stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Clayton Norberg on the tackle. A little stuffing the day after. David Watson. Thanks, sure. There's not much room in there right now. <laughs> That defense is really tightening down on the inside. They have not tried running the ball outside yet this half. They've been pounding the ball inside. Maybe they're opening or getting ready to open it up on the outside. Second and 10. The razzle dazzle worked once. We may see some more of that. Reed. Threw it, had it knocked back to him. Does he get a completion for that? Yes, he does to himself. <laughs> for a loss. Big loss, he should have dropped it. They were setting up a screen. He was rotating, here he rolls out to the right. They're setting up a screen back here to the left. He's gonna throw it, they had blockers out in front. But again, another batted ba uh, ball. That's the fourth batted ball of the day. Loss of eight, third and 17 now. Carthage offense getting themselves into some pretty big holes here in the fourth quarter when it comes to down and distance. Reed back to throw, he's got the wind with him. Has a man, oh he stopped. Idris stopped and then couldn't get to the ball. Well designed play. Zach Reed had a man open, had, had him open along the sideline and Idris, again I think the wind had a little bit to do with that. He thought he was gonna come right into his hands. The wind blows it just a little bit out of his reach. Huge play, wide open actually. So the Blue Boys can't capitalize on that fumble and they'll have to kick it away. Trailing 14-7. Norberg had a good return last time. Chased down from behind by Jack Rogers at the 45 yard line where it'll be first to 10. 36 yard punt and 14 yard return. Norberg racking up some yards on the returns. Well, Newman survives the bullet. Well, that was uh, an opportunity for Carthage on the fumble. But their defense does a good job and turns it back over the offense with good field position again, 45 yard line. Gives to Norberg here, and he's across the 50 into Carthage territory. McGinn, Morgan, Shutt, Peterson, uh, Petriga. Those guys are all starting to really play hard up front and starting to uh, move the pile back. Four, five, six yards of carry. Got to look at Clayton Norberg. Three times he's been to state in wrestling. He was a state champ last year. He is a tough kid. And he gets the ball again, battling injuries here in this postseason, and he is carrying the ball here as time winds down in the fourth quarter, and Newman leads 14-7. to He was a state champ last year, second as a freshman, third as a sophomore, and uh, you can imagine he'll be going again as a senior. Norberg again. He's gathered in at the line of scrimmage by Miletus. Those wrestlers are just a different breed. I mean, they are they are kind of the Navy SEALs of high school athletes, aren't they? You like you <laughs> like wrestlers. They're physically tough and they're mentally tough. Right. And uh, it's it's 
Coach Proposi knows when you get in the, in the fourth quarter of a state championship game, you give the ball to one of your best players because you want to ride your best players here when it counts. And obviously, uh, he's doing the job. He's been to state in track, too. Ran a 49.8 in the 400 meters. Big play here now. Sounds pretty fast to me. Yeah, that's a huge play in this game. Probably the biggest play of the game. Fourth and about a half a foot. Salvatore keeps it himself. Did he get it? It'll all depend on the spot. Okay, first down. Yeah, he got it. Chris Salvatore, 337 yards rushing his quarterback this year. Seven touchdowns. He threw for seven and ran for seven. He's a good athlete. He's, he's big and strong. We saw that earlier in the game when he uh, was able to shuck off those uh, would-be uh, tacklers, particularly on that uh, two-point conversion. He's big and strong. Newman gets four more tries at it, and Melitas jumps offside. Dead ball, encroachment, defense. Looks like they may have the clock working again, Lee. It says 5.07 left in the game here. That's got to be pretty close. Yeah, it's, it's moving, stopping, and starting with the referees now, so I'm assuming that is uh, close to being official at least. Here's Norberg again. Boy, he had a lot of friends in front of him too. He's down to about the 35-yard line, close to another first down. You know, this time of year is probably not good for wishbones when you think of turkeys yeah. and what you do with a wishbone, but uh, this wishbone has not broken here today. They're moving the ball four or five yards, exactly what coach wants, um, eat up time. It's been their type of football game really from, from the first quarter on. It has been a field position game and uh, taking advantage of turnovers, and that's really how uh, Sterling Newman likes to play. Carthage shifted, and one of the Comets moved. Looks like they're on the left side of the line. It's the second time that's happened when, after that shift. It's difficult to hold uh, your stance when you're on the offensive line ball, with a quick shift like illegal that. Illegal procedure. Offense. Still second down. It'll be second and six now for Newman. Looking for their third state championship, 1A champs in 1990 and again in 1994. Norberg again, and look at that pile. Looks like a rugby scrum. Nothing fancy, they just... Uh, <laughs> put their shoulders down and uh, charge off the football and move the pile. That's when all the weight lifting and the conditioning pays off sure. right here. It's been a physical game and uh, maybe taking uh, a toll a little bit on uh, these two-way players from Carthage, but don't count them out. Three minutes on the scoreboard clock. Third and two. And they change up a little bit, give to Welty that time, and it's going to be awfully close. Wildrick, Swearingen, Huff all there for Carthage. Another measurement. Well, if you're the offensive coordinator right now for Carthage, you're starting to find some plays that you're going to be able to go the distance because you've got to have some faith that your defense is going to be able to stop them here um, and give you the ball back. There's 238 left in the game, and uh, they're going to have to be creative. They don't necessarily have a two-minute type, type of offense, but they're going to have to find some plays that are going to be able to score quickly. They do have the win, which is one advantage. Third and not much for Newman. Check that fourth and not much for Newman. 
they might try that uh, shift again because they've been one part of their best defense uh, has been getting them to jump offside. So we'll see if maybe they go to that shift. There you see the games coming up for you here on the IHSA TV network. Big play here. Fourth and about a half a foot. Salvatore just sticks his nose in there and gets the first down. Mike Paposi says he runs like a fullback, and that was a fullback type play right there, run by the quarterback. If you're Coach Unnu now, you got to start thinking about when you're going to use your timeouts with 2.20 to go. They need to stop them on this drive, use their timeouts, and get the ball back to their offense to have a chance to come back here. So uh, don't be surprised if we see him uh, call a timeout if we get a stop. On the other side, your Salvatore, uh, you want to use the total 25-second uh, uh, clock. He's got it in front of him here at, at, uh, at the stadium. He can see it. Run it down to one and use the clock. Norberg again to the right side. He's down to about the 30-yard line as the clock continues to tick. Doesn't look like Coach is going to use his timeout here. Second and seven, 11th play of this drive. Both teams with two timeouts left. Here's Welty, he's got a hole. And brought down inside the 20 by Brian Huff. going to make it tough even with two timeouts with only a minute nine to go. It's going to make a tough duty Gain of for Carthage. 12 on that. Nice run by Welty. The Newman guys can taste it. They know one more first down and they'll be the 2A state champions. We're under a minute to play if the scoreboard clock is correct. Here's Welty again. He stopped now just inside the 15, and Carthage will call timeout. 14-7 our score back after these local messages. Fourteen seven our score. Sterling Newman leading Carthage. If the scoreboard clock, and we haven't been told that it's operating properly, so that may not be the correct time. It says 37 seconds left. Welty on the carry to the right side. Ball carrier. Firing in on the tackle for Carthage. And Carthage calls its last time out. And we'll be back after these messages on the IHSA TV network. Thirty seconds left in this ball game. Sterling Newman with the ball in a 14-7 lead, threatening to increase that lead here and ice the state championship in Class 2A. Here's Welty around the right side, and he's in for the score. Chris Welty puts the exclamation point on it for the Newman Catholic Comets from 11 yards out. And that is going to be the third state championship for Sterling Newman and Mike Paposi. Just a great drive. They needed a drive that, you eat, that was going to eat up the clock here. And they had a drive that uh, about a 14 play drive. Chris Welty, some key runs during that uh, drive including the, the uh, last run, run to put it in the end zone. Great run, great drive for the state championship win for Sterling Newman, Central Catholic. Jake Harrison on for the kick. Jordan Edwards is his holder. It's up. It's good. It's 21 to 7. 14 play, 55 yard drive, up 702. 
It's exactly what they needed. That's their offense. They don't do anything fancy. They don't have any game breakers. They're going to break long runs. Five yards, that's exactly what they needed to run that clock out. Well executed. It shows the discipline of that team, and uh, they deserve to be the two-way state champions today. And 11 yards for Chris Welty. Mike Paposi says he has loose hips, and he's very elusive, and he was all of that on that play here in the final minute, and the Sterling Newman fans begin to celebrate. They'll be taking a state championship back home, back after this on the IHSA TV network. And we're back. Fort, 21 to seven now our score, Sterling Newman. And our defensive play of the game. Or not. Jake Harrison will kick off now. And just boot it down the middle of the field. Picked up there by Zach Reed. Fakes the reverse. Keeps it himself. Eludes a tackler and is out at the 40-yard line. Well, if you're Carthage, you never give up. you got 23 seconds. You get a score on one play, get a chance for an onside kick. You never quit, and I know they won't. Uh, but it's, it's awfully tough duty uh, to go uh, this far and that many points in such a short time. But it has been done. It has been done. But I think it probably won't be done against this Newman defense. He's played great all day. And another great season is going to end up coming up just a little bit short for Carthage. They showed a funky little set there, but Newman calls timeout. Smart call by uh, that defense. They still got their head in the game, even though they're up 14. Nice timeout just to make sure they're organized and how to uh, defend that formation. Some happy fans from Newman. Great atmosphere here at Memorial Stadium today. And uh, as the schools get bigger, so will the crowds. And boy, tomorrow night it'll be packed in here. We've got more football coming your way here on the IHSC, uh, HA, uh, <laughs> IHSA TV Easy network. For you yeah, to say. if you talk for three hours, you're bound to make a mistake or two. <laughs> Sometimes more than that. <laughs> it is a great two days down here. Uh, just a great atmosphere with the fans coming in, coaches from all over the state coming in. And uh, it's just an exciting uh, uh, thing to watch these high school players play their hearts out. Great talent, great coaches. Um, my high school football. Um, it's just, it's just a great place to be down here at the University of Illinois. Reed all by himself in the backfield. Has a man, that is Alan Byers, and he's out of bounds. What do they call that formation, Coach? Lone they call it cat? successful. <laughs> Let's go downstairs to Mike Cleft real quick. Mike? Guys, real quick, before the last play of the game, Tim Nelson, Newman Catholic's defensive coordinator, has a ribbon with two numbers on there, two and ten. They're in honor of two deceased players that coached for him. Both those numbers retired. You can bet it's a special day for Tim Nelson. Back to you guys. Indeed, a special day for the Comets. Reed lost it deep and broken up by Jason Prendergast as time runs out. And the Comets begin to celebrate a state championship. The 21-7 win over the Carthage Blue Boys here in the 2A title game. Great feeling for those kids. A lot of time, effort, and work goes into... Uh, a team of this caliber to get to this point and then to win it is a great feeling for them. And congratulations to Coach Paposi. Yeah, I sure do. Mike Paposi, I know he's looking for Jim Unruh to shake hands, but Mike, one of your players just came up crying, said thank you very much. One of your assistants said, I think this is the best defense ever here. They were great today. It's been a great defense. If you had told me when you held these guys to seven points, I'd say you're crazy. They're such a great offensive team and defensive team at all. And 
I've got all the respect in the world for Carthage, and, and our kids just stepped it up again today. That's all I can say. Mike, the second half, it looked like your guys really took control of the line of scrimmage. Yes, we did. You know, we... Good job, Jim. Good job. Good job. You want to join us for the love to. Sounds good. Of course, Mike Poposi shaking hands with uh, Jim Unruh. A couple of class acts right here. So, Mike's second half, it looked like your team really took control of the line of scrimmage. We did. You know, we just told the kids we didn't. We came out, we played terrible the first series on offense and on defense. Good job, Coach. And uh, we just weren't ready, and we came back and played better second half. Bottom. Coach, you've won 90 and 94 and now now. I know I don't want you to compare teams. I'm not asking that. But this team's special. This team is very special uh, because they are a team. We have no superstars. We just got a lot of kids that believe in each other, and that was the game. How much fun did you have this year? I had a great time. I hate to see it end. All right. Mike Poposi, the winning coach of Newman Catholic. Guys, we'll try to get to some interviews with some of the players here in just a moment. As you can tell, we're right in the middle of things. That's what it's all about. Lee, Greg? All right, Mike. And congratulations to the Newman Catholic Comets. They finish 13 and one and bring home the third state championship in school history. And you can see, talk about team unity. They walked into Horton Fieldhouse yesterday to practice and it kind of looked like a swim team, at least from the haircut standpoint. They're all shaved down for this game and The, the unity is there. These guys believe in themselves. Maybe the smallest team in Class 2A in enrollment of just 233, and they bring home the big trophy. Well, they played fantastic today, start to finish. All right, Mike, you there? You got your trophy yet? <laughs> Nate Dreesen, who scored the go-ahead touchdown, and Nate, you guys are just, uh, well, charged up is an understatement. Is this even better than you thought it would be? Oh, it's a dream come true. I mean, these guys are great. I love coming out here. It's just too bad it's over for the seniors. I love them all. Nate, everyone said that you guys were basically a bunch of no-names. There was no star on this team, in other words. Is that the case? And how well do you guys play together? Well, you know, there's, it's just, you can't really describe how, how close we are. We love coming out here to the line. The line block's great. It's just, it's a great feeling. Nate, you guys fall behind early seven to nothing after the short punt. What did you guys say on the sideline when you fell behind that early? Because obviously you really took control after that. Well, there was a lot of game left, so we, we weren't really worried about it. We knew that, it, you know, they had a lot of guys going both ways. We've only had two or three all year, so it just comes down to discipline. Is, bottom line, the second hand, well, let me ask you about the defense. One of your assistant coaches on the sidelines right before the end of the game said, I think this is the best defense this school has ever had. Oh, it's, it's awesome to watch them. I mean, they're, they're great. They go out there. They hit hard. They do their job. Nate, I think you got a trophy you'll get. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Thanks. All right. Nate Dreesens, he scored the go-ahead touchdown for Newman Catholic as Newman Catholic went on to win the Class 2A state title. And the bottom line is, Lee and Greg, they were just tremendous in the second half, especially defensively. Back upstairs to you guys. All right, Mike. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Uh, third quarter this season, Newman outscored their opponents 87-6. to six. And they didn't give up a touchdown after the first quarter. And that was a seven-yard drive. I mean, you, you talk about what their defense has done this year, and they held Forreston in the first round of the playoff to 27 yards total offense. We talked about what they did to Leonard Parks at Maroa last week on his home field. They had seven interceptions in a game against Eastland Pearl City. I mean, the you know, you can go on and on about this Sterling Newman defense. Yeah. Their, their defensive line, and then also on the flip side, their offensive line took control of this game about midway through the second quarter. It was all Sterling Newman and, and their line uh, taking it to the Carthage line. And, and that dominated on both, because it was both sides of the ball. They were able to move the ball when they needed to. They were able to stop Carthage when they needed to. My hat's off to those guys up front, the big boys that we don't call their names very often. Right. Great job uh, offensively and the whole team. Well well coached, well disciplined, did, made all the plays when necessary. and. Uh, they, they deserve to be the uh, two-way state champions. Travis Peterson, Aaron Morgan, Charlie McGinn, Jonathan Shutt, James Patriga. Yeah, they don't, the linemen don't ever get enough credit, but uh, that's that's where it all begins and ends in football. And uh, our hearts go out to the Carthage Blue Boys, who uh, their undefeated season comes to an end here today. They were 13-0. They finished 13-1, and and for the third straight year, lose their last game of the year but only one team in each class gets to win the last game of the year so I mean you 
Yes. You know, I remember when the Buffalo Bills were going to four straight Super Bowls and, uh, you know, things that were said about them because they couldn't pull off the big win. Sure. But, uh, you know. It's still a great it's a, accomplishment. It's a great season. I mean, you look at, the, at getting to the championship game and, uh, you know, a lot of teams would trade places with them. Yeah, it's just so hard. They have such high expectations every year. They put this date down on the calendar, on their schedule, and they assume to be here. So it's a lot of disappointment for Carthage. But uh, these guys right here brought uh, their team over the last three years. These guys have played all three years. To bring those captains, bring them this far each year is a tremendous accomplishment. And congratulations to Carthage. Yeah, Jack Rogers, David Watts, Skylar McKinley, Brock Idris, all three-year starters for Carthage. They've been to three straight state championship games, and uh, our congratulations to them. And uh, you, you know, when you sit up here, you, you start to think about, you know, what these guys, how dedicated they are, and what they devote their lives to uh, to playing football, and right. lifting weights, and working out. Can you hear me now? Yeah. And, hear me now, okay. Uh, you know, it's 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 a great commitment, and it's a great lesson about life. You know, you work hard, and uh, and hopefully it pays off. And, and you don't always win. Right. You know, I, I, uh, I think uh, Chuck Knoll, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers coach, said the great thing about football is there a scoreboard. You can tell how you did at the end of the day. And that doesn't always happen in life. But uh, just because you lose a game doesn't, uh, doesn't mean you weren't, you weren't successful in a lot of what you did. They don't get here. The Carthage team doesn't get here every year by just wearing that blue. Those kids right. have to work. And it's not uh, an easy road. They have to win football games, and they do it convincingly. And uh, they set a great example for the younger, uh, younger classmen, underclassmen, and uh, they've really done a great job building that program. And how about the example of this team? Mike Paposi brings down here uh, a, a team, as he mentioned, without a star player. There's no, you know, there's no All-Stater on this team. There's nobody that's uh, getting more publicity or, you know, making headlines. I mean, it's just, it's a team effort. Uh, and that, that sometimes, unfortunately, I think, is, is seen as a cliche, a team effort. But uh, that's what it was, people uniting and, uh, and putting together that united front and, and achieving a goal, and congratulations to them. It's a great you Normally, when you have teams in the state championship, you have two or three game-breaking kind of players that can take over a game and get you uh, to where you need to go when, the when times get tough. This was, a, this was a total team effort. If we look today, if we, we do the final stats, each one of these different running backs carried the ball probably seven to eight times only. They didn't have a 1,000-yard rusher um, right. on their team. They didn't throw the ball extremely well. Um, but they played good, disciplined football um, and made the plays when they needed to as a group. You, we could name any one of these guys, and, and at some point during this football game, they made a big play. And, and that's a really a great testament to the, the teamwork and, and the unity that Coach Proposi developed. It, it a great job. So one state championship for the Big Rivers Conference. They could end up with a second one later today. Bureau Valley, the only team to beat this Newman Central Catholic team uh, plays for a state championship later. And, the, and this is, I love this, both teams both gathering teams. for a team prayer. Uh, and there you can see Father from Sterling Newman, the That's principal, right. uh, who shot a 74 at Weaver Ridge Golf Course in Peoria earlier this That's year, right. he told me. It just shows you the, the perspective on what's right. really important. You know, and, and uh, that's exciting to see, and that's what high school football is all about. And uh, I, I thanks. I heard your Coach Unruh uh, whisper right. to Coach Post, hey, would you right. join us for team prayer? And that, that is a great thing. In, in, in the spirit of thanksgiving and thanking God for the gifts that, that we were able to witness today and, and watch these kids play, it's, it's a, great, a great thing. Mr. Bradshaw, a pleasure. We'll see you a little bit later yeah, on today. To Congratulations to both these squads, the Carthage Blue Boys, second place in the state for the third straight year. Sterling Newman, their third state championship in school history. 21 to seven, our final. More football coming your way in just a bit here on the IHSA TV network. We will be back with more from Champaign after these local messages.